what's going on everybody quake we here back with another video today i have for you i will revisit power toys power toys has transformed a whole lot since last i looked at it last april 17 2020 which is last year if you're watching this this year 2021 in fact so much that here is what the original uh, power toys video looked like my voice was far quieter and the audio was far more sporadic and uh, It was squared off like crazy because it was Windows 10 days um, That was those early days of Windows 10 and or not early days or rather those late days of Windows 10 and you can see there were far less options uh, For power toys back during those days. It wasn't even in its full version one at all um and now if i simply go to general right here and maybe stretch this out just a little bit i can show you a comparison between how it looked and how it looks now so now they've transformed the whole thing the whole thing they've really embraced windows 11 i can tell right off the bat because all the icons on the sides of every single tool on power toys has been updated um, to some full color. It's not like metro feeling icons that Windows 10 had kind of, you know, that whole design style. Uh, and then they've added a bunch of a bunch of uh, toys that you can play with. So, uh, in fact, if I just kind of go up here, you can see they've updated all the hover animations and everything like that, but they've added a bunch of things too. So there's Fancy Zone still. There's Awake, there's Color Picker, and Color Picker is straightforward. If you activate with this shortcut or you can click this and change the shortcut um, windows key shift c you can see right there that it simply lets you see what the colors are that you're using on your os so let's say i want to know i don't know what color is this tree bark here i want to use it in affinity photo i can click it and then you get the color of the tree bark i can adjust the color and then i can just copy the hex code by just double clicking and highlighting and just right clicking and copying or i can just hit this button and it copies it to clipboard so that way I can paste it into my editing application and actually use that same color if I'm inspired from that color. So that's a pretty dope thing. And then just exiting out to get away from it. Color picker is straightforward. All of these tools have a bunch of options that you can turn on and off. So if, again, if you're a power user, power toys will help you a lot in your things. And there is one thing that I'm kind of avoiding awake for now. I want to talk about fancy zones. Fancy zones is fascinating to me and it was fascinating back then i know windows 11 now we have this area up here where you can kind of use those snap guides like that so it kind of made this redundant however snap guides cannot be modified at least not yet and so if you don't want to have things in these six layouts here unfortunately you're kind of stuck with it but on fancy zones what you can do is you can launch the layout editor just clicking that and then it lets you pick different layouts. So you can hit no layout, focus layout, columns, and so on. You can even create a new layout if you wanted. Let's say I wanted to create a new grid layout or canvas layout to have overlapping zones. I could do that. Um, but to activate these current layouts that are set up by default by the whole Power Toys team, uh, this, my current shortcut for it is Windows key shift that right there, that quote button or whatever that is. Uh, so if I press that, you can see it pops up and it lets me choose uh, what kind of layout I want. I love this for the reason that I use a 49 inch ultra wide monitor with the ridiculous resolution. And the bigger your monitors go and even multi monitor setups, you can really make good use of having designated zones where applications should go. Um, so if I just want priority grid, I can just minimize that. And then now the button is if I hold shift it says hold shift to activate zones while dragging. So if I'm dragging and then I hold shift, it's now activated the zones just like that. So let's say I want power toys on this side. Um, in fact, I don't even need to do that. Um, let's say I want, I don't know, I want the web browser in the middle right there. Um, and let's say I want, I have files, the files app. Let's say I want files to go onto the right side because maybe I'm going to be playing around with power toys while looking at a video, while looking at my files, making sure my files there. So you can imagine if you have a ultra wide setup or even any monitor setup and having these, you can even adjust the spacing between. If you think there's a waste of space in the middle, you can adjust that too. So let's say I want to launch the layout editor and let's say I want to modify priority grid and let's say I don't want the spacing to be 16 pixels. Uh, I can change the spacing to four pixels and hit save just like that. 
And now when I hit uh, exit right there, and then I come back, I can drag, come back, drag, come back, and drag one more time, drag and come back. So now the spacing around everything is a lot smaller, wasting far less space, but there's still a gap between the two. Uh, now, the only thing you can't do that is in comparison to the snap guides and things like that is with the snap guides, when you click on snap guides and you choose a space for things to go, um, things automatically fill in like that, you know, especially my recording on OVS. Uh, and with snap guides too, it allows you to automatically resize things. If they're too close together, you can kind of just do this and kind of redrag and things resize and they fill in. That doesn't work for fancy zones and power toys, uh, but overall it, it what works just works so i'm not really complaining with it so now let's let's make this back to full screen so you can see more you got file explorer add-ons so you can do some add-ons with the file explorer which allows you to preview more in the preview pane so if you enable these it allows you to enable svg preview markdown editor previews enable pdf preview all in the file explorer and then so there's some extra ones for icon previews our SE, SVG thumbnails and PDF thumbnails as well. So these will view the full documents, the full pictures and documents. These will just show the thumbnail for the uh, icons. Uh, next thing here, we got image resizer. So image resizer is another interesting one, right? Uh, if you're an editor a lot, if you write in a blog, which I will be probably doing very soon, um, Power Toys has an image resizer that implements that into Windows, especially in Windows 11. And basically what that does is you can choose these presets, which they have filled in by default from small to phone. They filled in by default. I added web for 1920 by 1080. Let's say I want YouTube thumbnails. Um, I can resize things for YouTube thumbnails. Now, some other things that go on with that before I even get more into that image resizer, you can use a fallback encoder. So whether you want to uh, encode things, uh, if something happens to PNGs or GIFs or anything you want, the quality of the JPEG, I love it to be 100%. Um, PNG interlacing, you can choose to turn that on and off. TIFF, which is more raw format, general raw format, uh, you can choose to change that up, whatever you want. Um, and then you can choose the file format, how the name of the file will change when you finally use it. So basically, an example, let's go to my desktop, let's minimize all this. Um, I did. I showed an example with this, and now I'm going to use hit space because I have Quick Look, the app Quick Look that I looked at in the past installed, and you can see the difference. So this is the original file. This is the screenshot of the corner when I was doing another video, and I said I want to increase the resolution of it to or the size of it to 1920 by 1080. So now it is what will be as close to 1920 by 1080, which is 1920 by 420, because it scales it up. So let's say I wanted to do that um, with this picture here. So this is a nice picture, right? It's 1920 by 1080 right now. Let's say I want to shrink it. So I can right click. I can then go down to show more options. And then you see I have a ton of things here. And then I can go up to resize pictures. When I go to resize pictures, you see it's already set to web. Um, you can choose to make pictures smaller, not larger, because the larger you make a picture, uh, if it doesn't support that, it's just going to become more grainy, but I can choose the drop down and I can say, you know what? I don't want it to be in a web size. I want it to be a small size, what is called small on power toys. Uh, and then I can choose to resize. So now it created a new file. Obviously you can choose to make it uh, modify the original file, but I like it to make a new file so it doesn't mess up the original. And now the file has been scaled down to uh, this size that 480 resolution at the end. So it, it basically takes down the long side to what it can do um, and scales it appropriately. So it's it's a good, good application just from that. Uh, keeping on going, there's even more keyboard manager. It says reconfigure your keyboard by map, remapping keys and shortcuts. Uh, that'll be a pain in the butt for me to do, but I'll just show you that uh, you can choose to remap other keys and stuff. If I click anything, I can choose to remap it. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to ruin myself and my productivity on this computer. Um, here's an interesting one. On Mac OS, on, for a while now, you've been able to move the mouse cursor super fast and it gets bigger so you can find the mouse cursor. On Power Toys, they decided to say, hey, if I click left control twice, I get this little highlight thing so I know where my mouse is at all times. So let's say I'm like, I'm using a giant monitor, I'm using like three monitors, and I'm like, where is this tiny mouse cursor? Double click control, and now I can always find my mouse cursor no matter what. Let's say I'm doing a demo, 
you can do that and then they also have an option to not activate that on game mode because let's say left control does something special on a game you don't want that thing to just suddenly mess up what you're doing in your game uh another one here we're almost done here is power rename power rename basically is what it says it allows you to advanced bulk uh and search and rename things so you probably saw that when i was doing a demo um for the image resizer and i'll show you that in just one second uh power toys run this is probably my favorite tool other than fancy zones for power toys altogether it's a new one um basically what it does is allows you to have like a universal search interface on windows something that should have been included in the beginning on windows even windows 10 days it has it in this version of power toys and basically my shortcut for it is alt space so if i hit alt and space I can start typing. You might wonder if you've been following the channel for a while and you might know that I looked at an app called Fluent Search. And basically what that did, it, it probably did a little bit more advanced things than that, this, but that let me essentially have a spotlight search, Mac OS's spotlight search on Windows. And that's pretty much what this does. So let's say I want Power Toys. In fact, I gotta click it first, Power and Toys. So there it is right there. Um, and basically it, it only searches for apps that have that are indexed in Windows, so you might have to use your defragmenter and you know index some more things to make more things show up. Uh, let's say I want Tales of Arise. I can choose Tales of Arise if I want. Let's say I want to play, I don't know, Forza Horizon 5. Forza Horizon 5 is right there. Um, Age of Empires. I can choose, yep, I want to play Age of Empires. I can do that. I can open up Edge. In fact, I can search the web with this, but it'll automatically do Edge by default. So the way I can do that is I can just say google.com, just like that, and it says open in default browser. And it the default browser, as you know, you my gripe, you have to change all of the URLs or the extensions on the default apps in your settings app on Windows in order to have this change from Edge. I haven't done that, but you see that when I did it, boom, it opened it up Google in edge just like that so that works really well too so one more time uh let's say i want to open up uh kina bridge of spirits i can do that and it'll launch the game there's even more options run under admin you can open the containing folders so if you want to just know where the path is and so on so it's a pretty dope dope thing video is getting a little long but last few things to uh the shortcut guide it's a nice this is something i love as well because I am not Paul Thorat that memorizes shortcuts on Windows. I just don't, even though I use Windows a lot. Um, so this allows me to enable, and then I can set the activation method, whether I want to customize shortcut or the hold Windows key. I like to hold down the Windows key. And then the duration before showing in milliseconds, by default, I believe it's 900. Uh, I like it to activate faster, so I'm not waiting. So if I hold down the Windows key, Let's see if it works. Nope. Let's try it again. Hold down the Windows key. There we go. And as long as I'm holding the Windows key, this interface will keep showing up and it'll show me my last open window. And then you can see that it designates, hey, you press the Windows key and you can now choose uh, any of these like highlighted red things and you can do more. I can create a virtual desktop with Windows key plus control D. I can switch between virtual desktops. I can open the narrator. I can lock my PC, I can snap the window that is currently live right now, or I can say I can open up another Edge browser. So let's say I wanna open up Edge, boom, Edge opens up just like that. So it's a pretty nice function just like that. And then there's last one here, um, or before I go to Awake, the enable video conference mute. I'm not gonna play with this just because you won't be able to hear me as I'm demonstrating it, but basically all this does is if you are using video conferencing software, and honestly, they call it video conference mute, but this works on just OS wide overall. So it can mute your microphone on your OS. It can uh, mute your, it can cover your camera essentially on your, turn off your camera on your OS as well. So whether you're in a video conference in a recording session like I am or anything like that, it'll allow you to do that. And that's pretty straightforward for that. Now, once again, all these icons here and these buttons here allow you to reconfigure what the shortcut is that lets you do each one. These are just the defaults, just like that. So now, uh, last option that's gonna pop up here is awake. Awake is a convenient way. It says convenient way to wake up your PC or keep your PC awake on demand. I turned it on because sometimes my computer goes to sleep for no reason, and so I just turned it on. You can choose to keep the screen on at all times so it never goes dim. 
and that's pretty nice so as you can see i leave enable awake on so that way um just based on my power plan i can keep my pc running and on in case i want to do something later on and now let's talk about power rename so i'm going to power rename uh again it allows you to bulk rename files so an example all of these pictures right here if i right click in fact yeah if i right click and then i hit show more options and then we look down we look for power rename open that up brings up a pretty decently nice uh, interface uh use regular expressions match all occurrences case sensitive i can replace all of this let's say all of those jumbled up file names i can replace it with derp right they'll all be derp and they'll all be automatically configured uh as derp depending on whatever i want so i can choose to use regular expressions match all occurrences and so on file and extension you can include files include folders include subfolder i'll include files in fact everything's already activated as is uh text formatting highlight that i want everything to be capital and let's see what else is there uh, numerate items i could do that so you can see what will happen it'll add a number on the side of it one two three four hit apply everything has been renamed uh with a four on the side just like that so it's it works pretty well that in a nutshell is the chunkiness that is power toys it's a power user tool let's that's a revisited of it hope you guys enjoyed this video i know it was a bit long but there was a lot inside it i wanted to go thoroughly through the whole application my name is kwaku and i will catch you guys on thursday and maybe wednesday as well so take care